So either way, the game is about to start. Let's see how well Toxic Youth fare. Um, Botar aside, Nefo is the replacement for now. Let's see how he performs. Uh, Kenitra Tiger's moving in in stealth. Uh, Suchi is actually going to be playing that subtlety spec as he's known for. So let's see how bursty he is. We see a sap on Swapsy. Joe Fernandez immediately blade storming, immuning any potential stuns. But Suchi's playing it patiently. He could still cheap shot Joe Fernandez. It looks like he's kind of considering it. He's just moving back and forth in the middle of the map, trying to figure out what he wants to open on. But that's giving Swapsy free time to attack No Life for Stokenov swimming at the heels. Nice shadow meld from Stokenov, actually. He immuned that storm bolt from Joe Fernandez. But Nefo's gonna follow up with a paralyze we see a cheap shot on joe fernandez but it doesn't look like he can follow up just yet with the clone they're going to use the sheep and clone nefo instead interesting choice of crowd control from kenitra tigers the shadow dance immediately forcing that shamanistic rage we see the ascendance actually coming out from swap so he just does not care you're setting up on me i'm just going to immediately go for your druid but uh stokenov sees that he's going to clone him up deny a lot of this ascendance damage uh, it looks like he's forced to attack no lifer instead for now we can see joe fernandez just sitting quite a lot of cc and is reluctant to move off the pillar but another full sheep landed onto nefo i, I think this might be the vigilance maybe out from Joe Fernandez. They're trying to hold on to the cooldowns. It seems like the polymorph has ended. Swapsy's going to trinket out of the smoke bomb and the life cocoon will connect. Swapsy will survive and no lifers on the run. Yeah, that was quite a good opening for Toxic. It actually looked scary for a second there when they landed the sheep onto Nefo, but uh, they were able to just get away without really exchanging much except for the life cocoon. A nice uh, cyclone from Chaz. Chaz has been on the ball with these low cyclones onto Solixi. Of course, he's not really that low right now, but he's just kind of slowing down the game. Uh, Nefo does have the follow-up CC as well, though. So when the Turbo Cleave does get to be offensive, which we can see the recklessness coming out from Joe Fernandez right now, they're not achieving too much of it. Although, actually, they're swapping over onto Chaz. He's down to about 50% HP. He has to blink out... Uh, and we actually see the raw coming out from Chaz. That's an interesting choice because that does DR with the sheep. So Nefo is now going to be on the sheep yard, but he is able to get the raw cyclone out. So that solo CC might be enough to force some cooldowns out here. Uh, Swapsy forced to rage, and we do see now the defensive sheeps again coming out from No Life. But this team, Kenitra Tigers have made some interesting choices in this series. I remember Chaz was talking to me about how they're going to try some stuff. It might go incredibly well, it might go incredibly badly, were his words. So. Uh, the disorienting roar is definitely one of those things which you have to look at for this team. Yeah, Suchi actually was on his mount looking for a re-stealth. He found it, but he gets popped out right away. Uh, he's going to have to go quickly here. He actually doesn't have any time to get his stuns. He's forced to kidney shot Swapsy, but with no cross CC, Nefo's not going to get followed up. We see No Life for getting punished. At the same time, Swapsy's still taking quite a bit of pressure. I think Nefo should be able to easily deal with this. Pops to our mastery. No Life are in trouble, barely blocking in time, but unfortunately it was overlapped with that Iron Bark. Now a full fear up from Joe Fernandez, caught into Stokenov. They're going to force Suchi on the back foot, forced to use his combat readiness. Uh, that should be enough to keep him alive, and, but they could just switch back onto No Life or Stokenov. Uh, despite all the swaps from Toxic Youth, is doing very well with his mana. Uh, we can see a full Stormbolt onto Stokenov, now onto the Paralyzed. Uh, Suchi could be in trouble, and the combat radius is still fully stacked. We see a preemptive Life Cocoon out from Nefo onto Swapsy, and this Life Cocoon could be enough. Maybe it's not. They've actually managed to cut through it. Nefo's caught into a full Cyclone. Stokenov just cloning him again and again. Uh, doesn't look like he'd follow it up just yet. Now follows up with a Half Clone, now cloning Swapsy on the Ancestral Guidance, so a really good offensive clone, denying a lot of healing. Uh, Joe Fernandez, in the meantime, just been working away at no lifers hp a full stun over onto stokenov a paralyze onto suchi i think he paralyzed him on his vanish so he's gonna get pulled out of stealth and a vanish is basically gone for suchi a really great paralyze from nefo he's gonna put them on the back foot no lifer and suchi down to half hp just kiting into the center field trying to drag nefo off the pillar trying to expose these guys but swapsy has so many cooldowns remaining toxic youth are looking really good yeah, and that offensive pressure is forced out of the heart of the world before dampening has even started. This could be really bad for Kenichi Tigers. They should be okay for now, but that cooldown is huge to uh, lose out on. And it looks like they're going for the offensive setup. On to Joe Fernandez now, actually. He's down so, so low, down to 50% instantly. Uh, the Shadow Mill from Nefo, though, denying any future CC coming in. It's going to enable him to get that life cocoon out. A nice cyclone from Chaz, however, does stabilize his HP at about 80%. Maybe if they can keep these swaps onto Joe, that did look really promising. And then a sap coming out of the Cyclone, not sure uh, about that. We do see the Paralyze use from Nefo, but maybe he didn't manage to get combat in the time that he was in that Cyclone. And that's going to be followed up with a Cyclone onto Nefo. Joe Fernandez using the parry down to about 60% HP right now. The DR sap of the Cyclone, well played by Ake Suichi. He's just trying to chase down Joe. The recklessness does come out for counter pressure, though. Kenitra Tigers are not stable on HP right now. Chaz is mana sitting at about 50% HP, but so is his HP. He needs to really start topping his team so they can afford to be offensive because right now the Turbo Cleave is just looking so, so strong. Uh, they still have both trinkets available for Nefo. He has that Nimble Brew, of course. Uh, the Life Cocoon should be back again very shortly. And 
Uh, Swapsy still has his rage. Joe Fernandez is a little low on cooldowns, Ooh. but his partners do have stuff to save him. I mean, right now, Joe Fernandez is the only opening target. If they go for a smoke bomb player or a good setup on Joe, maybe they can take him down. They get the full clone, but with no CC on Swapsy, he's just soloing Stoken off in the back line, forcing him to bark skin by himself. Now, Joe Fernandez leaping into the fray right onto No Life or just punishing him down to half HP. Stoken off struggling to get his team back up in HP. And, and that setup right there was the one that they really needed to kill Joe, but they don't manage to get it with no CC on Swapsy. They they're just not going to be able to get a lot of pressure. We see defensive polymers from No Life, where it's like evacuate mode right now. Try and figure out what they can get done because it's not looking good moving forward. Uh, Suchi Shieldwall is going to be running out here shortly, so they're just going to keep attacking No Life, or maybe they can force him to block. Uh, Shadow Dance comes out from Suchi. They're setting up onto Joe Fernandez again. It, it looks like they are. He still has no trinket, no die by the sword. He could still be exposed, uh, but with no CC on Swapsy right now, he should be able to off heal him fairly effectively. It looks like they're just going to go on offense. We see a clone on Swapsy, another polymer on Nefo. Joe on the run, trying to blade storm just. Uh, ballerina around the pillar trying to get away from his opponents and it seems like he's still actually very low here nefo's trying to cast he fakes no life first counter spell i think right there uh but he gets into the full kidney shot joe fernandez in a lot of trouble right now how much support will he get we see the life cocoon before the smoke bomb sick play from nefo keeping joe fernandez alive and on the offensive charging over now onto stokenov if swapsy could connect they might be able to take him down swapsy's trying to get around the pillar get in line of sight to start attacking him no life has been really good with these polymorphs defensively giving stokenov a lot more breathing room but it seems like that like the rmd is playing well defensively but they're not getting too much done offensively yeah i wanted to say that kenichi tigers actually forced a bunch of cooldowns there but i mean ultimately all that they really got was the life cocoon and they got the trinket for the blind so it's not a fantastic exchange and unfortunately nefo he nimbles the deep freeze but he wasn't available able to avoid the sheep and this could be detrimental for him uh swapsy forced into that shamage down to about 60 percent can they follow up the cc but again it looks like swapsy again able to get that grounding totem down always able to stop the re cc and now they're forced to sheep him up every single time kenichi tigers push for that re cc even with this creative talent choices things like disorienting raw coming out from the team it never quite seems to be enough for them to follow up a long cc chain onto nefer and that's kind of what monks are known for being exposed to that cc but it just doesn't look like it for toxic youth right now and now they're going offensive forcing the ice block onto no lifer uh the dance coming out from makai switchy this could be their kill window there's no breaks available for oh. nefer this could definitely be the game there's no uh sham rage available the vigilance comes out but maybe it's too late he's down to about 30 percent hp can they follow it up with the cyclone they really need to land this it looks like stonkinov isn't going to be able to a nice in cap coming out from nefer the frost draw however to follow up the vigilance has now fallen a nice cycling onto swapsy they need to chain that onto nefo otherwise he will be able to get the life cocoon off uh nefo just kind of desperately running away we do see the life cocoon now the kidney shot though maybe they can still kill through this they need to get more cc onto nefo yeah, they land the full polymorph, and Swapsy's in a lot of trouble. At the same time, No Lifer is dipping low. It seems like both teams are struggling to deal with the pressure, but Swapsy Shamanistic Rage isn't going to be enough, I don't think. Sokanov follows it up with a full clone. Swapsy's struggling to deal with the damage. A rallying cry comes out, trying to stay alive. They're trying to keep their foot on the gas pedal. They want to keep moving forward. They've got Suchi so low. They've got No Lifer so low, but a nice offensive clone denies any healing coming in. They follow it up with a clone. Nefo's caught in a deep, and Swapsy will inevitably fall. And despite Kanitra's Tigers kind of struggling throughout the earlier parts of this match, they seem to have found their thunder and dampening uh swapsy's off healing doing a lot less they were starting to get really good cross cc on joe and nefo and they finally got them caught in the middle of the map that's exactly where kenichi tigers wanted them right in the middle of the map and uh they're gonna take victory in round number one uh, that was a really weird game i feel like i mean i i don't think we're gonna see the raw again from Chaz because even though it it did have its uses and they did some weird cool CC with their stuns. I mean, like, they did deep freeze into clone, or deep freeze into roar into clone on the monk, and they were doing, like, cheap shot into sheep on Joe Fernandez and all these things. It's like, ultimately, at the end of the game, the roar was kind of useless, because I feel like they have to get the sheeps onto the monk. If they lose five seconds of CC by roaring him, of course, it does DR with the polymorph, and I just don't see them ever killing. Their, their cross CC never quite seemed to be there until the end, and even at the end, it was... There were little gaps he was able to get the cocoon off. It was just uh, that was dampening, and Akko Switchy was able to come in with a great kidney shot to follow up. So uh, that's going to. Neutral Tigers 1 0 ahead right now, but. Uh, I certainly think Toxic Youth can come back, especially on a smaller map you know, where they can finish them off slightly faster. In that position, I don't really blame Swapsy for like wanting to do aggressive. Like, when you have your Shamanistic Rage, your defensive cooldown, that's when you need to be pushing and pressuring them, force them to go on you, and then you can trade out the cooldown and keep going. But in the position that he was in, it, it seemed to be not enough. Like, they just killed him through it, and then he kind of got caught off guard, maybe, by that amount of damage. And then by that point, everybody's in the middle of the map, everybody's getting CC'd. 
and it's like you're just alone you're stuck there you don't you don't have the mobility to really get back to the pillar and they just finally got him isolated and they're able to take him down so i mean i think um Kanitra tigers can maybe play that more clean in the earlier parts of the game but it, it can be hard to get a kill on a, a turbo earlier in the part with the enhancement shaman off healing without dampening to reduce it it can be hard so i don't really blame them for playing as overly defensive as they were just with no life or spamming sheeps trying to get control of the melee and just run away and then wait until a later part of the game when the healing is lower and then try and kill swaps yeah i think it's actually smart for them to do that Um, but for uh, map I, decision, what do you think they're going to go for? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, like I said, I, I would like to see a slightly smaller map from them. I would like to see somewhere where they can maybe connect to Chaz a little bit more because he did seem to be dropping low quite a few times. I certainly think they can kill him if they get the correct uh, setup. But I think the two teams are ready. And it actually looks like Blaze Edge Arena is going to be the choice. So perhaps not what I would have expected, but this two-tier map does perhaps advantage the monk just a little bit because he's able to uh, kite around with his portal maybe he can avoid more CC like that and one thing we didn't see Toxic Youth exploding so much which I would have liked to have seen was maybe slightly longer CC chains onto Chaz when they did go offensive because well, I mean maybe Nefo just has to avoid CC more but like uh, if they could get like maybe the in cap into the stun from Nefo or something like that with the stun on someone else from Joe Fernandez, maybe they could set up these kind of 3v1 situations or I mean, kill Ake Switch in a stun. I don't remember if I counted exactly, but Stokhanov shadow melded, I think, four storm bolts that game. Mm. So that that's <laughs> yeah, it's uh, quite difficult when he's doing that. Yeah, when when a storm bolt is in the air, so the stun is flying. If you're a night elf and you shadow meld with it in the air, you actually immune the stun. And Stokhanov did that four times, so he immuned four stuns. And storm bolt with talents is roughly 20 to 30 second cooldown, right? So that's two minutes of potential Stormbolt, like obviously not for full two minutes of stun duration, but uh, what is that, like 12, 15 seconds close to almost mm. of stun duration that he just was able that's to outplay. Like, at worst, a third of this team's uh, CC, probably half of his CC that gets put onto him. So that's uh, quite a big deal. They well played by Chaz to be able to identify that every time because it's not always the most obvious thing to see when you're actually in the heat of battle when you're quite close to each other so uh, he's really on the ball with those kinds of things and we just this is such a strong team we're just... going to see uh we're going to see because of that he's able to get the full CC onto Nefer, otherwise they wouldn't have been able to get that cycle in there. And they, this sets up the cross CC uh, onto Swapsy. The Sham Rage is up, but it might not be enough. He's down to about 50%, but unfortunately it doesn't look like there's any follow-up for Nefer. Red. So life is dropping so, so low. He had to use the Ice Block on 19%, but he comes out and gets the Sheep onto Nefer. This could be a lot of trouble for Swapixy. Yeah, I'm curious to see if he's going to pop his Ascendance for healing right now. He could actually build a lot of pressure at the same time as well, but he's caught into a full stun. Decides to string out. Here comes the Ascendance! They're looking for the one-shot onto No Life. Her charge connects. No Lifer blinks away, desperately trying to survive right now. Defensive Sheep's coming out. Nefo Trinkets. He revivals him out of the Sheep on the Global to get him out right away. He knew that he was going to get deeped on the Trinket. Really well played from Nefo, keeping Joe a little bit more mobile. Unfortunately, it's not resulting in too many cooldowns. We see No Lifer just taking complete control with these Polymorphs right now. Nice Typhoon. Swapsy's not going to like that as he waddles back up the ramp to try and connect. In the meantime, Suchi's just looking for a restealth, just hiding away in the corner. Nobody's really bothering him. He's going to get a clean reset. Uh, let's see who he decides to open. I would imagine a cheap shot on Joe here very quickly. Uh, we see a defensive hex on No Life for there. Attacking Stokhanov. He's actually not dispelling that just yet. It is going to break the damage. Here comes the attack. Uh, Stokhanov, though, is getting pressured. I don't know if he can really afford to go for this. He's going to go for it regardless. He doesn't get it. Nefo Shadow melds the clone, but they follow it up with a roar. They go for the clone again, but Swapsy grounds the clone, and now Stokhanov's caught in the paralyzed. Now caught in the leg sweep in a lot of trouble. Forced to trinket out. He he blinks away, caught into a half storm bolt. Joe's looking to try and finish him off. Iron Bark comes out to root up Joe. He's, he's looking for the clone. Is Joe going to get the reflect? Doesn't look like he wants to risk going for it. Suchi coming back to peel Joe, just trying to slow him down. Sokanov really got shut down on that clone attempt and almost risk, risked his life for it. Yeah, there's a really interesting strategy coming out from Kenichi Tigers. Every, si every single time you deep, you see, instead of going for the sheep, no life, it goes for the frost onto Nefo. So that's his first CC, and then he wants to put the sheeps onto Joe Fernandez and ask Chaz to come in and get the cyclones first so that he doesn't have to commit to it later. But uh, it's, it's such a risky strategy, I feel like, because Chaz has to commit completely to that play. Every single time they go offensive, Chaz has to be close enough to the monk to roar him into the cyclone. And if he doesn't get it, then... Uh, well, like you saw there, he almost dies. He has to blow his trinket. So uh, it has been working out for them sometimes, but it's definitely a bold strategy coming from Kenitra Tigers as they are able to get the clone onto Nefo here. This is going to force out the Vigilance. Maybe uh, 
slightly unfortunately for Toxic Youth as there's no real dance or anything and they actually have to use the life cocoon as well they're struggling so much with the CC can no life land the sheep he can uh, trinkets up very soon for Nefo but that will mean the blind is also available for Kenitra Tigers as the cyclone maybe slightly overlapped onto Swapsy but it does deny the life cocoon's full duration the DR sheep onto Nefo now Swapsy could be in a lot of trouble here he doesn't really have cooldowns he has to use the trinket oh, no. before the blind he could even get blinded on this trinket maybe they could go for the kill here it doesn't look like they're gonna commit fully to this play they're really happy with the cooldowns they forced to Nefo with no trinket available there's no life cocoon whoa the whoa whoa whoa, whoa Chaz come out this Chaz of his what are you doing as well will he live he displaces out here and says, oh my goodness he's gonna survive this shadow dance from Echo Suchi barely keeping him alive he skinned at like seven percent HP <laughs> like that was more than greedy right there and he almost went down uh fortunately for Kenichi Tiger Suchi was there with the godly peels cheap shots for everybody we can see Swapsy is going to be in a lot of trouble moving forward he's doing his best to counter pressure but here comes the full blind they really don't have anything to answer this Swapsy's choosing not to trinket as well they're going to deep freeze Joe Fernandez to prevent him from stopping any CC but they don't get it regardless and, th and they get the life cocoon but a nice clone from Stokhanov is he going to be able to rotate this over maybe he's going to look for a reclone I'm not too certain right now he's looking for the reclone this life Cocoon is going to be fading pretty sure they sap Nepho. I, I don't know how they even managed to get that, but now Swapsy's surely going to go down. He pops the Ascendance in Defiance to try and turn this around. Trinkets under the kidney shot. He's just looking to one shot no life, but I don't think he can do it alone. It looks like he's not going to be able to. The Shamanistic Rage barely coming up in time. Is that going to be enough to keep him alive? Another clone onto Nepho. Swapsy's just trying to counter pressure. This guy has balls of steel just running at no life, or despite being so low on HP, he's going to get away with it. Now getting cloned up by Stokhanov. Nepho with very little cooldowns remaining. He's looking to try and get something done. He's going to paralyze Token out, but here comes the Shadow Dance out from Akai Suchi, and Joe doesn't have a trinket. He can't use the Vigilance. Everyone is crowd-controlled, and Kenitra Tigers have completely isolated Swapsy. He's going to go down, and Kenitra Tigers are going to take a 2-0 lead in this series. Yeah, I think that was such a good sap from Akai Suchi. I mean, a lot of people are going to accuse uh, him for the sap bug there, but uh, I, I really think Nefo just kind of, he had to drop down. He wanted to avoid the CC because he knows if he drops down, he can just pull it up and heal uh, Swapsy out of the cyclone. So he jumps off, makes sure that uh, he's avoiding any CC from Chaz or No Lifer, but then Echo okay, Suichi intelligently, he like goes for the restuff, jumps down himself and gets the sap in that situation. So such a clutch play from him. I feel like... Uh, uh, that was really the play that sealed the game. So uh, that's going to put us 2-0 up for Kenitra Tigers right here. And they're in such a dominating position going into the third game of the series. It seems like, uh, you know, the weaknesses they were afraid of with the Misweaver Monk, just, you can't, like, go into bear form to avoid getting sheeped. You you don't have a lot of heal over time effects as a Misweaver Monk, or at least not very strong ones. So if you do get CC'd, there's really not a lot supporting your team while that CC is going on. Uh, so he has to cast, he has to get those Soothing Mist channel to be able to heal his partner. It seemed like they were doing a lot of cheeky stuff where, uh, like, they would stop a re-sheep on Nepho and he would use his portal to try and get out of line of sight of the next sheep following it up or the next clone. But every time that he did it, they always had something else to get to get him with, so he never really got to avoid a, a very long chain and actually top off Swapsy. And then they got to an awkward position where they their cooldowns were kind of off. The Shaman Rage wasn't on cooldown with Dance. Uh, Joe didn't have his trinket up just in time. Like things are just slightly off, and that's why they were able to isolate him there at the end. So I, I don't know if Blades actually was the best map. Maybe they were afraid of them going on Nepho. Like, maybe they were scared of swaps to the yeah. Misweaver and they wanted to make sure he was safe. I'm not too certain, but I would imagine we're going to see something like Dalaran Sewers next. Uh, you, would you expect well, it? Yeah, I, I think they should select a small map. I'm also thinking maybe their play there was to uh, try catch Chaz because Chaz is going for these offensive plays very early into the CC chain. Like, his Cyclones are normally coming before No Life as Sheeps, even on Nefo. So maybe they thought if uh, Chaz has to commit on this map, uh, he has to kind of run into us. He's going to essentially, he has to run through the enhancement and the warrior. And even if he has to blink for that, like that's that could easily cost him his life. And it did almost cost him his life a couple of times. Of course, there was the one time where he was slightly greedy with his skin. And uh, maybe he got locked out before that. I didn't see. But either way, like he, uh, <laughs> he dropped about 5%. Like I can't believe he even survived that. So maybe they were kind of gambling on being able to kill Chaz on that map. But at the same time, Nepo. Uh, was quite intelligent with his positioning. He was often, when those low cyclones did come out, he was able to avoid the CC because he does have those two tiers. He's able to use the monk port to get into a nice position to heal. But like you say, I, I just, I feel like maybe it was like some 
they were trying they were trying something it didn't quite work out it was incredibly close but it didn't quite work out and now they might just uh default back to the smaller maps i think the smaller maps would let them get more pressure maybe they could punish chaz uh, like if that was downright instead of blades with chaz going down to seven percent i wonder if he actually would have even been able to get away um I like that they're pressuring the rest of Druid and they're pressuring the mage more. Uh, with Suchi running that combat readiness, uh, he loses, uh, I'm spacing out on the name of the ability, but it, he's missing out on damage reduction for his whole team. When he stuns a target, it will do, I believe it's 10% less damage to everyone. So he's losing out on damage reduction for his partner by taking a personal cooldown. And what often turbos will do is just con consistently look for setups on the rogue over and over. Uh, and if Akai Suchi can rotate through combat readiness, evasion, prep evasion, he can be pretty untouchable. So I like that Toxic Youth aren't committing to that strategy. They're playing around the spec that he's running and going for different targets. I think that maybe that's something they could look to do, though, with like maybe a paralyze on Akai so his feint falls off and then leg sweep him, go on to him after that. At the same time, Stormbolting Stokhanov. I mean, maybe they could coordinate that a little bit better. I don't think that Nefo's really getting to capitalize with his paralysis ability too much. Yeah, it just it just seems like Kenichi Tigers like they, they aren't always landing perfect cross CC, but they get they have enough CC and pressure for majority of the game that Nefo doesn't feel confident running out and going for offensive plays. And I completely understand that because if he does expose himself, it's going to be similar to Chaz, but maybe even worse because. He's a monk. I mean, he, he he does do a decent amount of throughput healing when he's out of CC, but he doesn't have too much to avoid it. It's really down to Joe Fernandez and Sorpexy to deny that CC, which they're doing a good job of when the setups come, but uh, they can't be doing it the entire game. So if Nefo is uh, exposing himself, he will get put into that CC, and uh, Toxic Youth may well fall behind from that. So Nefo is kind of forced to sit back and then... They don't seem to quite enough have quite have the pressure to take down Kanitra Tigers, although they were incredibly close last game with Chaz barely surviving a couple of times in execute range with Joe Fernandez. I'm sure uh, <laughs> spamming his execute button so so much, and um, it was only really appeals from Akai Suchi in the end that was able to save him, having to use the Shadow Dance defensively. We do see the Blade Storm from Joe Fernandez now, kind of a slow opener. Uh, we do. We've seen this a few times. Kind of the mind games of whether they're just going to open instantly or whether they're just trying to bait out the blade storm. It looks like they do bait it out this time, but at the same time, the opener's not too great. Nefo able to get the in cap to start it off. Yeah, Nefo's actually caught in a deep freeze right now, but the charge stun will deny the polymorph follow up. And Nefo tried to shadow melt some CC there, but he's caught into a demoralizing roar. Sentence comes out. They're playing aggro onto Stokhanov, trying to build a lot of pressure here. He's going to trade out that bark skin. He's looking for a clone, but Joe Fernandez is just right in his face. Now eating a full polymorph. Stokhanov repositioning. Doesn't want to end up throwing the game here, being down that bark skin. Uh, it seems like they're content to attack Akai Suchi at the moment, charging now over onto No Lifer. He's going to be the target here as the Colossus smash goes up. A lot of damage following it up. He's trying to get away with that blazing speed doing a good job so far we see a pre preemptive iron bark by stokhanov he actually shadow melded the storm bolt there so he's going to immune the stun that's going to put him incredibly far ahead let's see what he can get done with this it looks like he's just getting his team topped off without a shadow dance they're gonna have to use the vanish here comes the vanish deep freeze onto nefo pre life cocoon but they follow the deep up with a d roar uh, they follow up with a clone uh, it seems like the life cocoon is actually already gone just destroyed saucy force to use his shamanistic rage now as well so much damage following it up maybe they can just kill him right through it nefo finally leaving the cc is going to paralyze stokhanov deny any offensive clones but Swapsy's running into the middle of the map good they have the Stormbolt to cover Stokhanov he's not going to get cloned up at low HP Nefo's going to top him off now the Stormbolt into the full fear no lifer could be in trouble here if they lock him on Frost maybe they could burst him down I don't think they managed to get it he's going to blink away now switching immediately back onto Suchi and he has a lot of cooldowns to trade out I don't think they're going to be able to get too much done here as long as he responds appropriately he's down at 37% HP uh, Stokhanov actually got windshirt on his heel it seems like they're going on offense so the Shadow Dance comes up but an early paralyzed a predicted paralyzed by Nefo is going to pause any cyclones and break up that chain entirely. We see a full stun now on a Stokhanov. They're still trying to build pressure. Suchi in peel mode right now, just stunning up everybody on the team, but they still can't capitalize on the stun. Suchi's still dipping so low. Force to use his evasion finally. And it seems like Joe's just going to switch back over onto No Life or maybe even onto Stokhanov. Stokhanov getting interrupted on that cyclone. How much pressure can they build? Just splitting damage right now. Nefo rolling in, looking for a paralyze at low HP, but that's going to break right away. They follow up with a charge stun. Stokhanov could be in trouble if Joe can connect, but he just can't. Suchi with a nice cheap shot peeling for his team, but it seems like Stokhanov and No Life are just can't get anything going. Their entire team just getting destroyed right now. Down at 30%. The ice block forced up from Noli for a Stormbolt swap. Maybe over onto Stokhanov. He did manage to get into the room, however. Suchi on the run, trying to get away from these guys. Swapsy moving forward. And it seems like Toxic Youth have stabilized here moving forward. 
Uh, talk to you for looking in a really good position, but at the same time, it's like uh, Kenichi Tigers have used the hard world, they have used the block, but they have stabilized crucially. So their HPs are now quite high and they should be looking to go on offense, but they did use quite a few of their tools defensively there. This is the Shadow Dance, however, from uh, Akai Suichi. This is where they need to start getting their CC going, the full cyclone onto Nefo. They're actually swapping over onto Joe Fernandez. He does have his trinket available. He's choosing not to use it just yet, using those regen heals instead, sending it about 40% HP. They get the full sheep onto Nefo though. I feel like Joe Fernandez is going to have to use more cooldowns. He does have that parry available. I'd love to see it coming out from him. The double ice never connects. Isn't enough to take him down. Mm -hmm. There is that parry. Looks like he might be okay for now. The smoke bomb comes out late. He's down to about 20% HP. There's no room uh! available for no life. Though. Looks like he's going to be okay maybe. And the nimble brew does come out from uh, Nefo. There's the blind on the nimble though. Does he have to trinket that as well? They force both the breaks out of Nefo. This could actually be really good for Kenitra Tigers. Yeah, but Ascendance comes out onto Stokinov. He needs to survive to that point. He manages to displace away good polymorphs from No Life for buying Stokinov time to recover right now. Uh, Swapsy not getting too much done just yet. He's swapping onto Suchi. He's going to trade out his Cloak of Shadows now. Immediately swapping onto No Life for it. Toxic Youth are just all over the place, chopping everybody up. Akai Suchi forced to use his Vanish defensively, but he will get popped out eventually here. He's almost in the execute range, and Iron Bark is forced to be used onto Suchi. We see No Life for Blazing speeding away, but he's not going to get any CC just yet. I'm curious to see if Stokinov is going to blink in, maybe for a demoralizing Roar clone or something, but No Life for just taking so much damage. He's going to eat the charge stun now. Is Stokinov looking for a clone? He gets paralyzed on the clone. Great paralyze from Nefo, keeping his team offensive. Now following that up with a Storm Ball. Good chain from Toxic U. No Life for could be in trouble. Akai Suchi as well, forced to use his evasion now to avoid death. No Life for building up some icicles, though. He's getting ready for the next attack, I would imagine, pretty shortly, but he's just an exit. He just can't survive. Heroic Leap follows it up. He's forced to use his final block. Joe Joe is out for blood to take this match. Now it's switching over onto Stokinov. He's trying to kite in bear form. Akai Suchi getting a restyle, going for those stuns, trying to be able for his team. They follow up with the clone. Nefo Shadow Melt he, right before the deep freeze and breaks up the chain and gets the Life Cocoon onto Swapsy, which means that Swapsy can play so aggressively right now. They just need to go, go, go. Akai Suchi down to half HP. No life for trying to kite uh, for his team. Stokinov blinking back, but the charge follows it up. He's forced to trade out his bark skin. Swapsy just getting polymorphed right now by No Life for good control from No Life for throughout the match to keep these melee at bay but Suchi now getting swapped over to and Toxic Youth man they're just dominating yeah, I completely agree. Like, they've just been able to shut down so many CC chains from Kenitra Tigers. It's given them so much momentum. But at the same time, Chaz's mana is still so, so high somehow, sitting at about 70%. So his team is running low on cooldowns, but he is not out of fumes yet. And they can play for this dampening game. They showed that in game one. Uh, we do see the swap of Chi over onto Nefo right now. He oh, doesn't no. have that uh, cocoon available. He could go down, but, but Akka Suichi dies at the same time. They, they gave him his back for one second, and uh, that's <laughs> I all I thought he was going to be okay, though. He still had a few cooldowns available. I think he had the Cloak of Shadows, I guess. Maybe he wouldn't have done too, too much, but... Uh, I'm actually surprised he died there. They, the team still had cooldowns, but maybe they couldn't afford to go onto Nefo there. It looked like they were actually starting to get a lot of pressure onto him. <laughs> me turbo, me smash. <laughs> so that's what happened oh, at Sushi. <laughs> nope. <laughs> uh, my monk is dying? I, I mean, the best peel would be just killing the rogue right now, right? That sounds like a good peel, killing the person. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. And uh, that is going to put them back in the series. It's now 2-1 to one in favor of Kenichi Tigers, but Toxic E looks look so strong that game. I'm surprised they didn't opt for that map the first game because uh, on that pillar, they were just able to outplay or deny the CC from Kenichi Tigers every single time Joe Fernandez is always able to get some crucial charge stuns or there was a paralyze from Nefo because Chaz had to come in so far so that uh, he could be stopped on the CC he always had to come into his range so, like there was always something available and there was only really one pro pressure point for Kenichi Tigers where they got the nimble and the trinket out but uh, after that again there were trinkets up for uh, toxic Youth and Nefo was always able to kind of lose the Deep Freeze or Shadow Melt the Deep Freeze or do something just to slow it down so that the stuns from Akai Suichi were wasted and then his DPS were able to stop the CC. Yeah, I think that Nefo played that match much better than the past two. His Shadow Melts are really good, his Paralyzes were really good. If they can get those Paralyzed chains a little bit more often, like it seems to be where they build up the most pressure. Runes of Lordon looked like a very good map for them and I would imagine that Kenichi Tigers aren't going to allow that kind of map advantage again. So I would imagine Tolveron Arena, something big, yeah, Tolveron Arena. So it's gonna be much harder for Toxic Youth to bounce between targets on this map because it's so spread out. Um, when you commit your charge to No Lifer in the middle of the map, if he blinks away, you can't get back to him immediately sometimes. So this is a smart choice if you're looking to kite melee classes. 
Yeah, uh, this is this is where it gets rough for them because they lost Night Ground and then they selected Blade's Edge, which had a big map as well, and they lost Blade's Edge. Although both those games were incredibly close, so they they did win on the small map, but now they have the biggest challenge of all. If they can take this map, I uh, I really fancy Toxic Youth going into the final game, but I think this is going to be the battle for game four, whether they can take down Kanitra Tigers on their home turf. I mean. I don't think Kanitra Tigers have lost many games at all on Tigers Peak Arena. I think it's probably one of their most dominant maps. And of course, it's just because they're so good at kind of playing this reset game. We see Chaz's Mano is so good in these games. If his team can just kind of stay alive, maybe they got a little bit offensive in the last game with that swap onto Nefo, exposing Akai Suichi to death. But uh, uh, Stonkinov's Mano is just always good. They can definitely play for a long game. And this strategy certainly seems to help that as well because. Uh, the fact that No Life is able to sheep Joe Fernandez three times when Stoinkinov pushes in for the disorienting row into the clone just means that there's no real opportunity for counterplay from Toxic Youth. The warrior can't trinket reflect or do anything like that. He's uh, never able to reflect cyclones with the strategy. But at the same time, uh, it does seem to deprive Kanitra Tigers a bit of their cross CC. Yeah, it seems like Toxic Youth are just content to attack No Life first. Stokinov already forced to trade out his Iron Bark. We see Akai Suchi going for a Vanish play here, stunning up the entire team. They follow up with a Cyclone. It's a 3v1 onto Swapsy. He uses the Shamanistic Rage. He pops the Ascendance. He's just going on offenses. You know what? You're going to try and kill me. I'm just going to immediately start pressuring your Druid. Already down to 50% HP. Stokinov forced to use his Heart of the Wild NS. A lot of cooldowns burned from Stokinov, but Swapsy traded out his entire arsenal as well. Now forced to kind of pull back, trying to get in line of sight of Nefo to start the heals. But the Smoke Bomb comes out, but he did get the Soothing Mist before the Smoke Smoke bomb. He's just healing him through the smoke bomb. Great play from Nefo. Uh, Stokinov sees it. He's going to clone up Swapsy at low HP instead. Nefo shadow melding in the frost shot. Unfortunately, not long enough to avoid the polymorph. They have to stop any cyclones onto Nefo. If he gets a cyclone, it could be the end of the game. It doesn't look like he's able to just yet. Uh, it seems like Nefo's doing a good job just healing up. He's trying to fake cast the counter spell or maybe a step kick even. I'm a little bit interested to see why he's faking, fake casting so much. He's seen Oli for blinking in. Goes for the deep freeze. Connects the frost shot, but they get the life cocoon up just before it. Nice paralyze onto Stokinov. Pressure onto Nolai for right now. He's forced to defensively sheep uh, Swapsy at the moment here. Just try and give Stokinov more breathing room to top him back off. It doesn't seem like Suchi's getting pressured too hard. He's actually looking for a re-stealth. Uh, I really don't think they should let him get it. They're going to fire Nova him out and deny that re-stealth. Really well done from Swapsy. And it seems like they're just going to attack Suchi for now. But I, I think that Kanitra Tigers are going to feel pretty fine just kiting away from the pillar, dragging them out. It seems like Stokinov's moving in to get something done, but he's going to get storm bolted and clotheslined by Joe Fernandez. So he's not going to eat a Cyclone. We see Vigilance and Shamrage actually overlap. Uh, yeah. I, maybe it was necessary, I, I don't know, but that, that is a tremendous overlap of cooldowns right now, and Sokinov's going to deny it with an offensive clone. Yeah, that could be very detrimental for Toxic Youth, as we do see the Cyclone even able to deny the uh, damage reduction from those two cooldowns, which were slightly overlapped there. Uh, Nefo forced to trinket out of the blind, that's a decent exchange for him, but now we have to see what Kanitra Tigers can actually do with this. They need to deny the thing, but at the same time, Akasuichi dropping so low, and he actually dies through his wool and the iron back there it's it feels like toxic youth are really able to kill echo switchy in the series and that's the second time he's just kind of died i mean again there were cooldowns available for kenichi tigers fairly sure and uh they just kind of randomly kill him when they looked like they were so far behind there and in the last game nefo looked like he was facing death and then twice in a row uh joe fernandez and swap actually able to kind of connect to echo switchy and just kill him i mean uh, so much time is coming up from Toxic Youth. I, I don't, I don't know if he's just getting caught off guard. I mean, I'm kind of surprised by how quick he's dying sometimes. Um, I, I, his combat readiness obviously didn't have time to stack. Um, Iron Bark, when you're in execute range, will do nothing. So maybe, I, I don't know. I feel like maybe they just got lucky right there. Just like a Mortal Strike, a Storm Strike, connect at the same time, both hit pretty big, and you just, your health disappears. It seems like Suchi maybe could do more to survive in these situations. I mean, I def definitely yeah, think he I, could, but he's, he's kind of like... I, eh. I, I don't know, because the thing... like uh, They did use cooldowns, but they used them slightly late. I mean, the thing is, when they do commit, especially on a map like that, they uh, Aki Suchi can easily end up losing his healer, and maybe that was the case. It's just uh, the cools weren't quite there, like a little bit of burst damage, which of course can happen from Turbo Cleave if Joe uh, gets some... Uh, gets a nice crit on his model strike or something like that. They can definitely kind of drop them quite suddenly, but um, uh, maybe like it was slight miscommunication. Maybe they both expected something from the other person. 
I think that was definitely cooldowns available in that situation. And uh, this is the thing, like, Kenichu Tigers have played that long game. Game one, they look so strong. Uh, they weren't even that close to dying, to be honest, in game one. But uh, this is the second time in a row where it's been looking good for them. They've been forcing the cooldowns out. They've been playing like this long game. Chaz looks fine on mana. They look fine on cooldowns. And then they're kind of just getting gibbed a little bit by Joe and Swap XC. So it's certainly something to watch out for. And like I said, like, if they can win on 12 even if they just take the game like that, it's a tournament situation. It's not a best out of 100. If you take a game like that, it means a great deal, especially on the main map choice from this RMD. Yeah, without Tolferon, it means that they're going to have to fight on... I mean, we've seen Blade's Edge. I guess Tiger's Peak and Dalaran are, like, the main contenders. So, obviously, Tiger's Peak is going to be the choice, I think, for Kenichu Tigers. But even still, that's not terribly biased. Like, neither team is going to get a huge advantage on Tiger's Peak. And now, having lost the map that you're normally supposed to win on, uh, it's going to put them really, really far behind. And they're going to have to maybe, like, not go on tilt as well. You could easily just be like... Like, if I was no life or sitting there, I'd just be like, Akai, what are you, like, what? Just stop dying! Like, <laughs> why are you dying? Like, you could go on tilt in that position, like, if you think you're playing good and then something like that happens. So, Kenichu Tigers have to keep a level head uh, as they're moving into game number five. Yep, I completely agree, and, uh... I mean, they definitely have the potential, like, the setup is there. They, they are winning a lot of these games, they're going through the quarters, they're doing... Uh, a great job, I, and I, in fact, they're doing a better job now of going through the offensive cooldowns than they were at the start of the series. Like these last two games have looked really good for them offensively in in some regards, but um, at the same time, Toxic Youth have maybe they have their number now. They they see Akai Suichi as definitely a potential kill target, and maybe that's something they didn't do in the first games. Like in the first games, they were putting a lot of focus onto Chaz, a lot of focus onto forcing blocks from No Lifer, but now that they're starting to swap over onto the Rogue. This was kind of what we talked about. If Nefo can get those in-caps, maybe even follow up with stuns, and they can just stun Akai Suichi, they're not really doing that, but it's certainly one thing they could look into, maybe to try kill him. At the minute, they're just kind of killing him with damage, which is also a very respectable strategy from the Turbo Cleave. Of course, they do have a lot of damage in their arsenal, so uh, we'll have to see if they're able to take down Akai Suichi one last time, or anyone else for that matter. At the same time, I, I still feel like Kenuta Tigers have a very good chance of taking it. This is game five, of course, the winner of these, this series does go through to the upper bracket, and uh, the other team will be knocked down, I believe, to face uh, the team we saw in game one, right? We haven't seen the first so we series can worry just about yet. That after. Um, but either way, Swapsy getting cloned uh, makes me think that Kenichu Tigers are going to do something sneaky. Cheap shot on Joe Fernandez, deep freeze on Nefo. No, nope, doesn't look like to be any tricks right now. Just going after Swapsy. Deep freeze into the demoralizing roar, into the full clone. Interesting chain uh, that Kenichu Tigers have come up with for this team. And Swapsy just getting bursted down through his Shamanistic Rage. He's going to pop his Ascendance now and counter pressure at the same time. No Lifer has to be careful. Uh, Stokenoff sees that he's going to trade out his Nature Swiftness, instantly top off No Lifer. And now Swapsy still kind of at low HP. Nefo trying to deal with that counter. Counter spell. He wants to cast some heals here. Finally able to top him off. We see a Stormbolt onto Suchi. Just leaping right onto Suchi, actually. Uh, but not getting too much damage just yet. A Paralyze onto Stokinov. Uh, it seems like that Paralyze is still building a bit of pressure on Suchi. He's down to half HP. Stokinov does not have Nature Swiftness to top him off. And now a charge over onto Stokinov. Joe just spreading his damage out onto as many targets as possible. Here comes the Shatter Dance, though. This could be the game if they don't react appropriately here. Joe caught into a Polymorph. He's going to trick it out. Trade out the Vigilance. But will that even be enough? Swapsy down to half HP. Nefo caught in a cycle. Clone Swapsy trying to hold on to life, dropping that healing stream totem, trying to get a little bit of extra health. Nefo caught into a clone chain, one more clone to follow up. They're going to clone Swapsy at low HP. If No Lifer can switch a Polymorph onto Nefo, it, it'll only be half, but I think it's worth it. Uh, uh, Swapsy into that smoke bomb, but really didn't actually get too much done with it. Nefo into a kidney shot, decides to nimble brew out right away, but Swapsy has recovered. Now he's on offense. Suchi's in trouble. He doesn't want to throw the game again. He's cloaking down to 30% HP. Stokenoff forced to trinket out of the stun. Heart of the Wild is popped. Stokenoff struggling to try and keep his team topped right now. Suchi still below half. Swapsy finally getting cheap by No Lifer. No Lifer trying to take control of the game following that up now with a clone but with Shamanistic Rage, with Life Cocoon, Toxic Youth are looking really good. 
Yeah, and that was another greedy play from Echo Switchy. He did have his evasion already there, and he just chose not to use it, and that forced Chaz to trink it. And now Chaz doesn't have his trinket. He's forced to bark skin in that in cap. Of course, no life are dropping so, so low as well. A nice in cap from Nefo to follow up the Storm Bolt there. So much pressure coming out onto Kenitra Tigers, but they are trying to turn around to Toxic Youth. The pre cocoon does come out on that deep sheep. Well played by Nefo. Swapsy looks like he's going to be okay for now. They're not going to have to trade out the Sham Rage as well. The cocoon is going to be sufficient. And now they can be so offensive. The defuse was used there. No life are forced into that ice block. Echo Switchy did use his evasion here. This could be the kill. The Stormbolt comes out. Is the trinket going to be enough? He has to use a second evasion, having to prep there. I'm pretty sure uh, no cooldowns pretty much left for Kenitra Tigers, therefore. He might have one vanish available if they're lucky. He's mounting up, actually, to try kite away. There's no trinket available for Echo Switchy. No trinket for Chaz either. One more setup like that with the in-cap onto Chaz and the Stormbolt onto Echo Switchy could easily be the game, but they're just kind of tunneling him down with damage right now. Kenitra Tigers need to be offensive, and that's what they're going for. It looks like it's a swap over onto Jerevan he doesn't have a trinket available just yet. This could be the series. Nefo managing to get out of the CC, though. The parry from Joe Fernandez, they're barely surviving. And the fact that they oh, no. survived that Sushi. might result in a kill. He's caught into that Stormbolt. Iron Bark was thrown onto him to reduce the damage. He's not going to go down. Shadow stepping back defensively. Kenitra Tigers are in full retreat, but Swapsy's relentless, just pushing forward. Now getting cheaped up by No Lifer, trying to deny his damage as much as possible. Doesn't look like Nefo has a dispel just yet. Now the Frost Nova out from No Lifer trying to root up these guys. Uh, it seems like Suchi's trying to go for these resells with that Crackling Jade Lightning actually keeping him in combat. No Lifer is at five icicles. He's at a critical mass of damage. Maybe they could just burst somebody down here, but with Shamanistic Rage available, it's going to be pretty hard. I think they have to go for Joe, but Joe has his trinket to break out of the kidney shot. It's going to be very hard for Kenitra Tigers here, but they're going to do it anyway. Deep freeze on Nefo. They're, get, they're going to land the frost shot. Joe caught into a polymorph, but Stokhanov's in a paralyzed. They can't follow up with a clone. They get the polymorph instead. Swapsy trades out the shamanistic rage. Is that even going to be enough? Death from above comes out. Full clone onto Nefo. Swapsy still kind of alone right now. He's trying to counter pressure at the same time. A full fear on a Stokhanov. Swapsy is going to survive for now. They've broken up the CC. Uh, as I say that, no effort gets squeaks in another sheep onto Nefo. Do they get anything else out of that? They're going to clone. Swapsy at low HP, denying any incoming healing from Nefo. How is Nefo going to deal with this? Is he going to paralyze Stokhanov, deny any more clones? They're moving forward over onto No Lifer. The Ascendants got popped. No Lifer is going to get the Iron Bark. Will that even be enough to stay alive? He's trying to kite. He roots up Joe Fernandez. Joe into the full kidney shot now. Stokhanov looking to chain that into a clone. It doesn't look like he gets it. He gets windshield on the Cyclone, but they're going to follow it with the Sheep instead. But a paralyze interrupts the clone. Now a Leg Sweep interrupting the clone. And Stokhanov just got shut down so much in this attack. They're not going to get anything. And they can stay so aggressive on no life he's forced to blink away they're going to connect with the charge forcing his final block for at least another 40 seconds i uh, loving these plays from nefo he's now able to he's now seems a lot more confident getting the cc onto chaz chaz having to push in of course does make it slightly easier for him as we see another in cap can they follow it up with the stomp i'd love to see that from joe of course akai switchy is dropping low no life has no blocks below uh left as we said there are trinkets available for toxic youth as well this is looking like such a commanding position for the team as we are entering dampening we do see the shadow dance coming out from akai switchy they should be able to force some coins here that is the life cocoon coming out onto swap xc it looks like he's going to be okay with that they are going to chunk through it however that's going to force the sham rage as well so very well done by Kenitra Tigers. Good damage coming out from them there. That might not even be enough if they can get more CC, but again, Chaz able to get that low cyclone onto Swap XC. Crucial plays, but it's going to get shut down on the re, thanks to Joe Fernandez's Dombard, and that's going to mean offensive plays onto No Life. So low, the snap has come out. He does get the ice block off barely in time. His snap coming out two or three seconds before that, but the double fair might mean he even goes down through it. The trinket hangs come out from Chaz now. Kenitra Tigers have nothing left. They have no evasion available for Akai Switchy either. They could easily kill him. It's Toxic Youth's game to lose at this point. Yeah, me Joe, me Smash, just going right after No Lifer. A full stun into a full paralyze. No Lifer's in trouble. Zug Zug, No Lifer's gonna go down. He blinks away, barely avoided an execute. Charge reconnects. Suchi's peeling for his life right now, trying to keep No Lifer alive. Stokhanov trying to go for a clone. He lands the clone into Nefo, but Joe Fernandez is gonna trade out the Vigilance. No Lifer's in so much trouble. Is he gonna be able to survive? He's trying to kite. Clones on the Swapsy, a root onto Joe. They're getting really good control on both of these melee right now. They're just not able to connect, but Suchi's in trouble. Just gonna go down. That execute, gonna be finishing him off. And Toxic youth despite being down two games they're gonna take it back 3-0 and tie and bring the series to a 3-2 score overall in advance yeah that was a full comeback train coming out of toxic youth and that last game wasn't any like random kill or anything that was uh, a very a very calculated cold like going through all the cooldowns of Kenichi Tigers even going through both the ice blocks they just look so strong uh, this game I just feel like uh, they got more and more confident as the uh, series progressed and Nefo was able to make so many important offensive plays towards the end. They're getting so many in-caps out onto Chaz and ultimately it is Akai Suichi who ends up fooling for a third game in a row.
Although uh, I think this is a really well played game by both sides and uh, credit to Kenitra Tigers, they came so, so close in this series. I really liked the roar coming out from Chaz in some ways. There were, some, there were definitely times where I felt like uh, maybe using the DR like that wasn't the best because it does, of course, cause the sheep to be half onto Nepho.